Oh, snap! NBA TV presents MB 90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevates and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes. We know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in like 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB 90s. As the 80s were coming to a close, a decade of domination by the Boston Celtics and the Showtime LA Lakers was coming to an end. But a new group of stars was ready to take their place. The new school that came in, they still had that go get it mentality, like the 80s. I mean, the shorts were tighter, of course. We all know that. Leg, thigh, a lot of knees. Then Jordan Air comes in. Now we got these cool, long, baggy shorts. Everybody was cool, and everybody wanted to go to an NBA game. The TV coverage got better. Uh, you know, then the internet started taking off. You know, all these things came together at once. It, the NBA just started taking off. Here we go. And the two hottest new destinations were Orlando and Minnesota? When the league went to expansion, off of the championship teams, guys get dished off to the new team. Minnesota selected Rick Mahorn of the Detroit Pistons. Watch carefully as the Timberwolves will be howling. Ow! First tip in the history of Minnesota Timberwolf basketball. It wasn't like we got new teams and it got weaker. They got new teams, they jumped right on the bus and the bus kept rolling. But it wasn't just a couple of new teams that were being introduced. It was a whole new style. When the Orlando Pinstripes came out, they were nice. Those first couple years, we had the top jersey sellers. I didn't really care for the pinstripes, but I had to get the Shaq jersey. I had to get the Penny Hardaway jersey. When you big pinstripes, you don't look good in it. Shaq with pinstripes, Creed Rollins. It looked good from the front, but when they turned around, it just did not work. Pinstripes, it's good for some things, but not for uh, Orlando Magic. OK, thank you for coming. And thank you for coming. At the turn of the decade, the NBA got into imports who'd become household names. No easy feat considering the pronunciations. We had picked a lot of guys from different countries uh, in the, that span of three or four years. Now we're used to so many, you know, foreign guys, but at the time it was like, what's your name? He's going to wear number 12, and that's what I'll call him on the fast break. And how old are you? You're a rookie? You are what you wear. Right, Vladi? He's getting rich because he don't speak English. You had guys like Vladi Divac. Here's a guy that's seven feet that can do things that, you know, small forwards do. Three on two break. Look at Vladi. Like, whoa. It's the rudest, too strong, Barcelona's. Yeah, he got a hand lock on that arm. Lefty, crafty with the dribble. Barcelona's, what a play to the hoop. A lot of people don't remember him, but definitely do your homework. The 90s, Manu Ginobili. Drazen Petrovic, may he rest in peace, rest in power. Hell of a ball player. Petro. Oh, my! He dropped 30 on me so fast, and I'm telling you, I got a hand in his face. I'm right up on him, and he was just like a machine. You always have this little ego, like, oh, he's foreign. He can't play. This is America's game. You know, they can't beat us. The next thing you know, he's going around. Petro. Nice move around Jordan. To have these guys come in during that time was a beautiful thing because that helped the expansion of the NBA. NB 90s Volume 1 will be right back. This is NB 90s Volume 1. This is virtually impossible now. One tenth of a second, touch it and get it up. Tucker swatches it. It's gone! Yes, it is possible to shoot with one tenth of a second left. You know, when you think about how long it takes to get a shot off, if it's a home game, it takes as much time as it does for you to get the shot off. If it's an away game, you never get the shot off. 
So what's the question, really? Now the question is, can a human being physically shoot the basketball in one-tenth of a second? Trent Tucker shot in the nick of time, forced a rule change that required three-tenths of a second on the clock for a player to catch and release. Trent Tucker, that game versus the Bulls, you know, he got it, he had a cup of coffee, and then shot the, shot the ball. He's the one that put the, the, the point two, point one, the points in the, in the second. Time was not on the Bulls' side in New York, and they still had not solved their puzzle with the Pistons. You know, we were all rooting for Mike. We were wearing the, the sneakers. We was trying to see him come through the ranks. Chicago couldn't get past Detroit three years in a row. One of the best teams ever. That's the team that put Michael Jordan on his Get a Jordan rule. Knock him down. It's Jordan Clover, and the Pistons want to make Jordan pay. They would knock his shoes off, and they would all surround him. What? What? Remember they knocked Scottie Pippen? Oh, and Lampier taking a shot at Dude, They knocked him out. They made him cry. It's kind of like growing up with a bully on the street. I think that if those guys played now, they'd foul out in the quarter. Jordan really had to raise his game, and you see it on his face. Like, next year, I'm, I'm coming back, and it's going to be some serious stuff going down. Yeah, the Pistons were coming out of the East again, but out West, Portland had blazed their own trail to the finals. Oh, Rip City, Rip City. You got Joe Kersey, you got Terry Porter, yes. Duckworth, and Clyde the Glide. Drexel on the ball behind the back, dribble up and in. He scores! Drexel in one lane, the Kersey in the other lane, and then Porter coming down the middle. They could fly, they could score a lot of points. The Trailblazers in the early 90s were just a really fun team. If you want to know about the Portland Trailblazers, all you need to do is look at the rap song they did. Rap City, Rap City, Rap City, Portland, Oregon, USA. But do you remember that? When they had, <laughs> when they had the thing? We're the Blazers and we love to play. That crowd in Portland used to go crazy and go wild. We hate going in there. They were one of the teams that no one wanted to play, and simply because of one guy, Buck Williams. Buck Williams jammed that thing. He was like their enforcer. There are no enforcers anymore now in the league. Blood now coming out of Buck Williams' eye. I was so young when I came to the NBA, and he was just like the strongest man that I had ever met. I didn't fear playing against anybody in the NBA, but when I played against Buck Williams, he made me think about playing against him. <laughs> Nobody ever could question the talent. Probably should have won a couple championships. The Blazers had their shot, but they had their hands full with the worm, Dennis Rodman, who turned out to be the 1990 Defensive Player of the Year. Back in the day, Dennis Rodman had short hair like mine, no tattoos, and he drove a truck. I have no negative things to say about Dennis Rodman other than he just gets on your nerves as a player. <laughs> uh, Rodman, who was my toughest competitor ever. That's what Dennis does. He does it better than anybody in the league. I knew that you could count on him playing hard. You couldn't count on him to make a free throw. Couldn't count on him to comb his hair. But you knew he was going to come in and go hard for you. And that's all you want. He wanted to win. And he wore his passions on the shoulder and crying after he won Defensive Player of the Year. I wanted this one so bad. As a Detroit fan, you know, I loved it. Yeah! Hard work, baby! Hard work! That's all it is, hard work! The future Hall of Famer would win his second straight title in Motown as the bad boys ripped through Portland in five games with Vinnie Johnson playing the hero. The microwave, Vinnie Johnson. Vinnie Johnson, he was, in fact, the microwave. He was so hot, he had the green light, the ultimate green light. When he came in, he was shooting. And you always thought every shot he took was going to go in. And pretty much they did. <laughs> Vinny Microwave Johnson came in, red eyes came in, and shot that ball like it was like, who is that dude? Vinny puts up a 14-footer. It's a score! The Pistons are winners and still champions of the world. After winning the title in 89, the Pistons came right back, and so will we, right after the break. You're watching MB 90s Volume 1. 
1991, the league got a new partner that had fans singing a different tune. The theme music to the NBC was the stuff when you in the kitchen trying to get that snack, and it's da -na 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 -na. When I hear that music, it's time to get ready. Ah. Uh basketball's on. There's no better feeling to wake up on a Saturday or Sunday as a kid and hear that music and just know it's like, all right, we're locking in. It just got you all fired up. And the game always delivered. I don't know what could have been better. You know, it's like, this is the best of the best. I was there. Now, I know that your goal is to win an NBA championship, but it had to feel nice to go through the Chicago Bulls finally. Oh, hell yeah. You'd sit back and you'd, you'd have your hoop dreams. For me, I'd have my hoop dreams right in front of me. NBA stuff. Check it out this fall on NBC. <laughs> Welcome to the premiere of NBA Inside Stuff. Oh man, Inside Stuff with the Rashad. That's the one. I remember that one. It's like one of those shows that you wake up on Saturday morning and it's like, oh man, I, I, I want to watch this instead of cartoons. Saturday morning, it don't matter if you played that night, you turn that TV on to tune in and watch Inside Stuff. It was just the Bible of the NBA. And a story that's sure to be a hot topic all season long. From day one, we knew this was going to be a hot show. Yeah, that was kind of when the NBA was really exploding media-wise, and they kind of turned that show into like an Entertainment Tonight style. It was fast-paced. You got a chance to see sides of athletes that you never saw before. There you go. Sleep, that was easy. Back in the day, you weren't really a star unless you were on the show. One of those shows as a kid that you just said, I hope I get a chance to be on the inside stuff. When I first got featured on it, I was, I was so happy. Have you always been that type of player? All the time. I, I think I get that from my father. My father tell me to go out there and talk to him, get him out there gang. It was cool. It was like, man, I get to see these guys off the court. It was more than just basketball. You know, Ahmad interviewing these guys. Boy, Ahmad used to have it going on. He used to have it really, really going on. This is a guy that we all kind of admired from when he played football. He was a great dresser. He was so smooth. He inflicted his smoothness to make a ball player feel comfortable so he can eject the knockout punch, the question to the answer we all want to know. I don't know how he got connected in the NBA, but that was the one thing that I didn't understand. It's like, it seems like he played basketball. Well, ain't you supposed to be catching passes? Like, what's your affiliation? But he, he knew his stuff. Willow Bay was fine. Willow Bay. Hope I get a chance to uh, talk to Willow Bay. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're going to You're get the man. Head, but... I mean, you're like the hair god around here, right? <laughs> listen, listen, somebody play some defense. <laughs> uh, this is the inside stuff now. I like that show. I, I, I'd, I'd VCR it. Now that's the inside stuff. In Denver, the Nuggets were running at altitude with attitude. I'm the new coach, Paul Westhead, and the star of the show was Michael Adams. <laughs> That gives him 50 points. Amazing. Michael Shorty Adams, no doubt. Hmm, little Adams. Uh, the three-point man. Throws it away. Adams three-pointer, good. If you chopped off his right arm, he's still going right. Michael Adams. Barkley picks him up and drops him. Annoying if you weren't a Nugget fan. Just all over the, like a little net. You just can't get rid of the guy. And then he shot the ball with one arm. Steal, Adams for three. Hey! Oh. All little men needed someone to look up to, but at eye length. The Nuggets played at a record-setting pace, which occasionally benefited the opposition. Here comes Skiles for a court. Skiles a little, jump shot is up, it is good! Scott Skiles with his 30th assist for the night, and that's the new NBA record. 30 dimes. Damn. He is not a pretty player, but he is a tough player. Running that games as if your name was Scott Skiles. He looked like he never took no crack. Yeah, I'm the white boy, I'm official, I'm up in here. Blase ski, and I got hot. Great handle. You were gonna get the ball as long as he was running the squad. Fans at the Hive in Charlotte were buzzing during All-Star Weekend when they caught a pair of legendary performances. It's Craig Hodges, it's good memories. I'm telling you, he loves that corner right there. He's gonna make four out of five. <laughs> maybe well, you, five. You, you and he had something going here. He loves that five corner. For five. He loves yes. it. 
Yes, sir, Craig. Haven't missed yet. Money ball! Money ball! Put on the show, Craig. Fans have been waiting for this. 12 in a row! He's not even looking at the ball to pick it up off the rack. Sheesh. It's hot. Look at oh. this. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable! Oh! This is the worst miss! Crazy. Back in the day, I didn't know they could shoot like that. He could shoot with his eyes closed, similar to Dale Ellis. They made All-Star Saturday is a definite must-watch. Yo, it's time to jam. The slam dunk contest kept the crowd pumped up. Uh-oh, he going to his pump up. He's pumping it up. <laughs> the infamous D. Brown with the pump rebox made it really seem like that, made him jump in the air like that. The best product placement commercial ever seen in the slam dunk. D. Brown with the close your eyes dunk. Unbelievable creativity. <laughs> oh my, D. Brown. <laughs> I think he was peeking underneath it, no doubt about it. Can I see the rim? Yes, I can see the rim. Whenever I see him, he definitely lets me know that he was the slam dunk champion. And I'm here to let you know there's more MB90s on the other side. You are watching MB90s, Volume 1. Carl Malone was the mailman because he always delivered. Naming a three-headed attack in the city by the bay was almost as easy as ABC. Was that run CCP? Not. Not for Tim Hardaway, <laughs> no. Run TMC. Run TMC. Press breaking down the bottom of the shot of a lift to reverse. Oh, Touch the foul. Perfect. They all fit so wonderfully together, and they put on a they put on a show. Rolls there. it over to Rich Ben with authority. Come on, run TMC. You already know what it is. It flow. Bat dat 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 dat. Here's Hardaway now. Hardaway with a great pass. People couldn't stop us. They didn't know what we were doing because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> you, if they went to the playbook, we'd be like, "What are you looking at?" Because we might have a playbook, but we're not running them tonight. We're just running you. And the Warrior fans are a happy bunch. I want to be a part of that. Let's go run TMC. Let's make it happen. Run TMC. Look out! Here comes the Hardaway Express. Mr. Cross though. He had the greatest crossover ever. He would put you to sleep with his little slow dribble, then he would switch that crossover up on you. This is what I do when I come down. Freak him, freak him like that. Uh. There's the crossover. Way to freak him. You knew it was coming. It's coming. A lot of people did it. Magic Johnson did it. But they didn't do it at that low volume. Tim crossed over really quick and actually named it. The killer crossover. Oh, oh brother. Hardaway. That guy's got skills. My nickname is The Rock. Mitch was like the man guy. Yeah, they called me the rock. Yeah, he was rock. He was strong and he was gonna get his points. Mitch Richmond. <sighs> Mitch was a bad boy. Big block by Richmond. The ability to just be physical and it was easy for me. I love the contact. Oh, what a move. When God made a basketball player, he just carved Chris Mullen out and just said, this is a player. You know they want to get the ball to Mullen, wouldn't you? He dribbles, he stops, he shoots over Magic from 21. And oh, he hit about a 30-footer! Chris Mullen, straight from Brooklyn, better known as Crooklyn. Brooklyn! Brooklyn is in the building. We here. Chris Mullen lived basketball. Couldn't get him out of the gym. As a working man, does it just a little better? Working man works overtime. He was always in shape. He was always in the gym calling us, talking about let's go work out, let's go play. So Nelly put me back in the game, man. I'm just about getting hot. A white guy who could, could jump that big, but still averaging 25, and will bust your <laughs> in a second. Look at Chris Mullen. When the curtain went up for the 91 playoffs, MJ took his act to Broadway. Oh my That was dirty. That was... Oh, please, let's see that again. A hundred times. They should have teed up Jordan. Like, you can't make three guys look bad on one play. <laughs> First of all, 
how he crosses him and comes back, Pat Ewing, and he just slams the ball. But more importantly, it's on 34th Street, so it's like a Broadway moment. Ewing's hand, if you look at it, comes here right by the rim, and then Jordan's hand comes up like this. And it's like, whoa, okay, all right, there he goes. And then he did it in the garden, man, against the Knicks, man. That was sick. The Pistons' reign in the East was built on a rough and tumble style of play that served them well. That is until Michael Jordan and the Bulls finally had enough of it. It was all about getting over that Detroit hump. They get tired of getting knocked down. Jordan putting the move on Duval. The Bulls on fire. They didn't have to accept the beating that we was given. Three straight years of playoff frustrations were eliminated when Chicago finally got the best of Detroit to advance to their first NBA Finals. That's what the 90s was, getting the Bulls out of the East to see the Lakers in the West. Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. That series was the changing of the guard for who was the top NBA team. Jordan with the step and the bucket. Scrolling alley-oop pass underneath the... Yo, oh, it's yeah, good! It yes! 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 And you had to hand it to MJ for his first iconic finals moment. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan! You know, we've seen it so many times. I is that makes it kind of fly is it's the palm of the ball. One way, put it in one hand. Then he changed his mind, put it in the other hand, and decided to just lay it up. After soaring through the air and seemingly defying gravity. I ain't hating, but he didn't really have to do all of that. He just did it, because he's Mike. Not many people uh, jump high enough to have different thoughts before they hit the ground. Normally when you jump, you got one thought, and then you hit the ground. But to jump and stay up there that long, he might have had two or three stop shots before he decided to do it the other way, because that's the way he used to hang during that time. It seemed like he did it, and he had a little bit more hang time. Like he bought airspace. It went with the flow of Jordan. I buy rent up here. This is what I do. Michael and the Bulls had just the perfect forum to launch their dynasty. And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. People ask me, can I fly or do I like to fly? Well, I think as a team, we've shown people that we can fly. Before we all get choked up, let's call it a wrap up. For NB90's Volume 1, it's your boy, Fab Five Freddy. Oh, snap! NBA TV presents MB 90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevation throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes. We know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in, like, 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB 90. The coaching carousel was spinning prior to the start of the 92 season, and when it finally stopped, a real big star landed in New York City. Welcome to the Big Apple, Pat. Obviously, when the Knicks signed Pat Riley as the coach, I was extremely fired up. I think Pat was looking for more challenges, and New York is New York. In terms of basketball, it's the mecca. I'm excited about being with the Knicks and having the opportunity to build something significant. like finesse, the hair, the suit. Like, all right, this is going to be fun. You have Pat Riley coming into the fold. They became legitimate. He changed his style of coaching when he came to New York. Pat Riley has great pride of defense. That is what he is going to stress to his team. You really saw that, the no layup rule. He brought the bully ball to, to New York. It was that bumping grind. That toughness of Anthony Mason, Oakley, and John Starks. We were physical. We wanted to keep hands on you. We wanted to keep bodies on you. 
you can see the team start to say, we're good, I mean, we're just gonna stay out here. And if you weren't hitting your jumper that day, you weren't gonna beat the Knicks. Pat Riley was all about winning. Came to New York, marquee team, turned the team around immediately. That was like a great move for the league because it created more excitement in the East. But basketball took a back seat when the start of the 92 season brought a shocking announcement in Los Angeles. Because of uh, the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. It was the most devastating thing that I've ever heard. I cried like a little kid. He just took it right in stride. It was like he was not going to let him throw him off in his life journey. The fans demanded an encore and voted Magic into the 92 All-Star Game. And the all-time great put on a performance for the ages. He's going for the MVP. Magic makes his cameo in the All-Star Game and lit it up. Three-pointer, yes, oh, my! He became like a poster child for HIV, that you could get through it, you could be positive. There was a chance, there was something else. Maybe you'll see me back, maybe you won't, but I'll remember the, all these good times this afternoon. I'd like to thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you. There's no other way you can say it. He's magic, he is magic. And B90s will magically reappear after this short break. The New Jersey Nets have looked with envy across the river at what the Garden has and what the Knicks have. Chuck Daly always had an eye for fashion and liked what he saw coming together in the Meadowlands. Fast break, New Jersey. Behind the back to Goldman. It was a camaraderie of guys that really just enjoy playing with each other, and that made it a lot of fun. That team had a chance to be a real dangerous club in the playoffs. There were a lot of pieces with that club. DC was definitely a beast. At 16, dribble, shoot, pass, block, shots. He just can do so much. Drazen Petrovic, sharp shooter indeed. Whenever I would get double in the polls, he's like, just kick it to me for three, DC. Petrovic for three. I just remember chasing him off screens. He's nailing these 28 footers. Drazen Petrovic, you gotta love this guy. Mr. Chibs, Kenny Anderson, left Rack City in the building. Kenny Anderson used to kill us when he was on the net. What a sweet move by Kenny Anderson! For whatever reason, New York breeds great point guards who never play for the Knicks. We had a great team, but the East was so tough. The talent pool in the East was out of control, and a crafty Cavaliers point guard kept Cleveland rocking. Mark Price, you just put him in a, a backyard on a barn and they put a basket up there, and that's the kind of guy he was. One of the most underrated players uh, ever. You know what, he really didn't get all this due. Under radar and publicity, but over radar when you had to leave him open at the top. Three seconds left, Price for three, yes! yes. Turn your back, you might get shot with a nice swish to the net. He could have been just like John Stockton, but I think that Cleveland team couldn't click. They couldn't get over the hump. Nah, they couldn't run with the Bulls, but the Cavs did send Larry Bird and the Celtics packing. Price again. He should be more famous than, than he actually is. He should be better remembered because he was, he was a phenomenal player. If you don't love Mark Price as a member of your team, then something's wrong with you. When the Bulls went looking for a head coach, they didn't have to go far to find someone who brought a style all his own. Look at that stash. <laughs> the hair was looking good, I, I, but you gotta check the mustache. Nice bushy mustache, he's got a little, a little mini fro. <laughs> Looks like his days as a member of the New York Knicks under Red Holzman and crew. He was a genius with the mustache. Just keep playing hard. Phil can pull things off that other people can't. Remember, he's 6'10", has those wide shoulders. He got the nickname Coat Hanger because of his wide, straight shoulders, which made him kind of look like a coat hanger was stuck in his shirt. A look for Phil that might be okay or acceptable might not work on somebody that's 5'7". PJ is so relaxed and so laid back. No one could take him out of his temperature. He coached 
at 40 degrees. You never saw him lose his cool. I called him the weatherman. He always stayed cool. I'm slamming. We're all jamming. And check out this video. Rexer, he's open. He's slammed! Taking off from the free throw line, putting his heels up, dunking on you, and his finger roll was almost as nice as George Gervin. George Gervin's is 100, Clyde is like a 99. Drexler takes it in. Oh, my goodness. Didn't touch anything but molecules. Freak of nature athletes, because not too many guys that just love to run. Clyde, Clyde, Clyde. yes, sir. Clyde, the Glide. Very humble guy, but can fly. Playing against him, you just said he's this evil, Clyde, strong. He's too big and too strong to be playing. The only basketball player I know to wear a V is and fly through the air like that. Clyde had his hands full when he ran up against Michael in the 92 finals. They did meet in the finals, and he didn't have a chance. Pippen's back for Jordan again for three! Jordan for three, yes! He is hot, whoo! Jordan was just on fire that whole series. Gosh, I can't remember. I can't believe I made that shot. You? That doesn't come out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth, if somebody don't come over here, I'm going to shoot these all night. An NBA championship series record, 35 points in the half. They were the running team, and Chicago was a team that could do everything, and uh, I felt sorry for them. The Bulls have repeated. Let the party begin. Speaking of back-to-back, MB90s will be right back. You are watching MB90s Volume 2. Shaquille O'Neal was a larger-than-life character, so it was only natural he would end up in the Magic Kingdom. Shaq, please have an autograph, please. Shaq was like, um, you know, Shaq was what the NBA needed. Shaq was absolutely what the 90s were about. Somebody young, someone big, a statue of life, rapping. Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu to return. My next smash CD. Well, you know, Shaq understood the nature of the game, and he understood the nature of media. He kept the magic smile going, but more importantly, he turned every press conference into some type of award show acceptance speech. He never allowed nobody to throw him and make it more serious than it was. <laughs> and before he ever stepped on an NBA court, Shaq's big break came on Inside Stuff. I said, I want to do a story on him, and I want to play him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just to see what he has. Hi, I'm uh, Mr. Rashad here to see uh, Mr. O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm going to show you what it's going to be like in the NBA. You ready? Look at him all Rashad all yoked up. Mar got that XL tank top on. He's got that, you know, that Jackson 5 haircut, too. Huh? 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 Is that one? Is it make it take it? Is it make it take it? Come on out here, big fella. So we go out and we play. <laughs> we go out and we play. And I make a shot. And I start talking a little crazy about the shot, you know? But Ahmad was antagonizing him. If you look at the tape, Ahmad like, was like antagonizing this dude. Yeah, Ahmad was talking smack, and this is what I, I did to him. Uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'll roll it back right there. Well, give me your best. Let me, see, let, me see, let me see your best. Oh! Dang. Yeah, Ahmad. A lot of people thought that was staged, and uh, I'm gonna go back again, and I want you to see how I landed. Check this out. As you can see, I landed on my neck and my back. Who stages that? Is that all you got? Yeah. <laughs> As a new legend was making his debut, Larry Legend was gracefully exiting the stage. Yes, I'm going to miss playing for the Boston Celtics because I was very proud to play for the Boston Celtics. Absolutely remember that night. Hey, that's Larry's retirement night. Magic Johnson, I mean, it's only right. Those two were attached at the hip. To have Magic revealed shirt, I thought that was the classiest touch. You only told me one lie in your career. 
Larry Bird said that there will be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. Magic and Larry had sort of had that uh, come together moment where they realized how important they were to each other. You couldn't have had a better opponent, a better man that he battled against to send him off. Tonight, my basketball career is officially over and I had a blast. In 1989, Charlotte first saw their new team, but by 93, they were seeing something else. You also started to see this new generation of player start to come out. Larry Johnson, man, it, he should be a small forward, but his muscles made him a power forward. <laughs> I think the 90s was that transition from you're a post, you're a shooting guard, you're a two guard, you're a three guard. Now you don't know. What are you? <laughs> the guy could do anything and everything. He was one of the best athletes that we've ever seen. Just a stud, man. The muscles, Barkley. No pain, no gain. Malone. I to work on the guns right here. The antics after a dunk. Ah! Larry was fly, man. I think he had the gold tooth. Yeah. First gold tooth. First gold tooth in the NBA. The gold tooth. The, the part in the middle of his head. He always had the crispy cut, very low, Caesar like baby about a two on the clipper. I mean, he was definitely a character, but a great character. LJ was on a roll when he was cast in the most unlikely of roles. Grandmama. 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 Grandmama 6'5", 250, man. <laughs> Big grandma. <laughs> it's not too many guys that feel comfortable putting on a dress and that wig in the first place. <laughs> when he became grandmama, then he was bigger than basketball. There's a new granny in town. Grandmama. <laughs> and then put Charlotte on the map. To Johnson at the buzzer. They had a really exciting team. They had uh, Muggsy Bogues, my main man. They had uh, Larry Johnson, they had Alonzo Mourning. Small, medium, large. Another formation of the trifecta. Ultimate fan person in Muggsy Bogues. Go Muggsy! I gotta go for it. You had the creativity and the intensity of Larry Johnson. And in the focus, bring your hat every night of Alonzo Mourning. Mourning over Ewing! Man, Charlotte was on fire. This is for the win and the series. Morning for the win. Hey! That's the year they beat Boston. And uh, they went to the second round. They had they had trouble because they met the Knicks. And I was on that team, so. My boy Oak shut it down. But we'll pick it up on the other side. Hey, yo, welcome back. NB90's Volume 2 is in effect. In the conference finals, the Knicks looked at ease running with the Bulls and served up a stark new reality for the champs. Bulls have all they can handle here by the New York Knicks. Sark goes baseline. And boom! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Oh, what a play by Sark! It was as exciting of play that you will ever see. Here's a guy that was bagging groceries. Here's a guy that, for his entire career, they told him he couldn't do it. The dunk, John Starks. And we used to always argue about this picture right here. It's the dunk on Jordan. But if you really see it, it really wasn't on Jordan. He didn't get dunked on. He didn't even dunk on. Like, yes, he did. It just so happened Horace Grant got the worst of it. Even if he didn't dunk over Jordan, it looks like it. It was close enough. And it was like, yeah, we Jordan you, Jordan. I mean, it was a great moment, but again, it went nowhere. It went nowhere. When they went to Chicago, Michael went off and the series was tied. He has 50. <laughs> you about to make me cry again? Plenty of time on the shot clock, out of 10. Ewing for Smith. Smith. Smith, Smith, stop, Smith, stop again. Pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes, pump fakes. Shoot the damn ball! Dunk it! It's crazy. I want to cry right now. I cried after that Charles Smith play. It's game five in the garden. You win that game, 
and I'd like to think that you're you're on your way to the finals, you finally beat Jordan. It just doesn't happen. You win the first two in a row, and then you lose four games in a row. We had a lot of highs, but even more lows. Those Knicks, those Knicks Bull series, just, they were crushers. In Philadelphia, Charles Barkley apparently had his fill of losing. You want to stay with this team? I just want to win. I just want to win. Charles going to Philly to Phoenix, he was going to get a title. Now he's in the perfect position. He's got teammates around him. Three, Is that Thunder Dan? Thunder Dan. The thunder makes you shake. A shooter, took it to the basket, he, he can do it all. For Thunder Dan. He's the first guy I ever saw modeling without a t-shirt as an NBA player. Just doing it, Thunder Dan. He got the lightning strikes behind him. Kaboosh, kaboosh. Thunder Dan. They also had Kevin Johnson, and Kevin Johnson was one of the great point guards in the league at that time. What a shot! You know, if you mess around and let that little dude down there in the, in the paint, he would dunk on you, and he didn't care who you were. This is a huge effort by Kevin Johnson. Ooh! Oh, in your face! Oh, God, this was, this was gorgeous. Kevin Johnson, the mayor of Sacramento, dunked on Hakeem Olajuwon. Kevin Johnson! Oh, my! And he just tilted his body like, and almost cuff, oh God. You'll be seeing that on your local newscast, Kevin Johnson. I mean, that was just, I'm one of the best defenders to ever live. Just like, oh God, like Olajuwon should have considered retirement after that. Surrounded with talent in the Valley of the Sun, Sir Charles was in charge. Charles Barkley was something else. He would get the ball on the fast break and just be gone. Here comes Sir Charles, Whammo! And he would dunk and swing on the rim from all the momentum. Don't get in his way! Rebound with seven footers. Push the basketball like a guard. Look out, here comes Phoenix. Oh, look at that pass. Oh my goodness! As a player, he's MVP. Undoubtedly one of those guys, top three, top five. Every year in the era when basketball was at his best. Barkley would be named MVP in 93 with a personality that was as big as his game. What can he say about Charles? I mean, he's the guy that does no wrong. He's like, you know, Charles can say what he want, do what he want, and people love him. Hey, Charles. Charles Barkley, just so much fun. Happy, the joyous celebration of life. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Some fan ran out on the court. And Barkley's getting some smooches. <laughs> and the great thing about Charles is that he always had fun doing it. And they should be. Barkley was at the peak of his powers and played like he was on a mission. Barkley, 20 footer, yes, with 1.8 seconds. Charles Barkley. Nothing personal. I don't mean to brag, but can't no one person stop me. Barkley, was the time that they realized they really had a chance to win a championship. We are the best team in the world. Let's go, baby. Let's win it, baby. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. Fifteen in the ball game. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He scores! Michael Jordan shot the ball 43 times. <laughs> Charles, you know, played well. He's going to be icing his elbow, too. <laughs> and they took the Bulls down to six games. Oh, what a ball! I remember Charles telling me that God told him that they were going to win. God want us to win the world championship. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, Charles. Oh, no. I talked to him another night. That, <laughs> shoot, that never happens. It's Chicago's game to win or lose. They put 14.1 seconds up. Suns lead by two. They're going to put the ball in Michael Jordan's hands. You got Michael. You keep it out of the middle. They want Michael to get a full head of steam. Try to keep him in the middle of the floor. The Bulls kept bringing people, you know, some people bring a rabbit out of the hat. They kept bringing people out, and this time it was John Paxson. Paxson going for the win! Here's Paxson for three! Paxson! Yeah! Yeah! Yes, for three! 
And I don't think people realize what Paxson meant to that championship game. Paxson actually put them over the hump in that particular game. The Chicago Bulls three straight NBA championships. That final series was one of the best playoff series I've ever remembered watching. This is the Bulls third in a row. They are now the Trip Bulls. As the Bulls make it three in a row, it's time for me to go. For MB90s, I'm Fab Five Freddy, and I'm gonna catch you on the rebound. Oh, snap! NBA TV presents MB90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevates and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes, we know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in like 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB90s. Shaq teaming up with C-Web in 94. Things were about to get c -c 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 crazy in the East. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to report a trade. But it was Penny Hardaway who would make a little magic with Shaquille. I'm thinking Penny Shaq, you got the next magic queen. The Chicago Bulls three straight NBA championships. But that run was in jeopardy once MJ announced he was walking away. When I lose the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. And what was on deck? Batter up, batter up, batter up. Shouldn't have never did it. <laughs> His airness was going from basketball to baseball. We've all played a little Little League Baseball. And we've all dreamed about playing Major League Baseball. And there's nothing wrong with going out and living your dream, man. At the time, I thought it was crazy. I was a Birmingham Baron. All my people from Alabama was like, man, I'm going to see MJ play. I said, what, is he hooping all baseball? I said, huh? Michael Jordan, the on deck here. When I heard he was going to go play baseball, I'm like, you know what? He's probably going to be great at it. And then he goes and puts a baseball uniform on with the socks and the thing, and he's running, and he's got these long legs, and... I remember the pants being like long and his long legs and he's 6'6", six, six, and who's 6'6 six, six playing in, in baseball? Like, what are you doing, man? I'm willing to take a couple of hits. He crazy. <laughs> God bless him for trying, I mean, but do that on your own time. We want to see you do what you do. We want to see this. We don't want to see this. And Michael wasn't the only legend trying out a new gig. Let's welcome back an old friend of ours. We certainly will, will all be trying to do our best to help him uh, become as successful as a coach as he was as a player. I'm happy to be back. I'm looking forward to the challenge because basically that's what it is, a new challenge. Let's go do some work, baby. The ball to Campbell turns underneath, they block his shot. Good play by Kenny Norman. Irvin Magic Johnson, as a coach, was not a good idea. What, what was that? Magic Johnson coming back as a coach. First of all, I don't know if they'll be able to see that picture. One of the worst ties ever. Magic had some of the worst ties. I think he only coached like 14 games or something like that. Not many. It didn't take him long to figure out that, you know what? You gotta have players to be a coach. Now, Lakers have some serious issues again. You could almost see him on the sideline kind of trying to will his team to do what he would do. And it's like, you know what? You're Magic Johnson. They can't do what you do. Magic saying, guys, stay apart pressure. I've told you in the practice session. You know when you conquer something, and then you retire. And then you say, hey, I want to do something else I love. I wanted to do this. Go ahead and try it. You're not wearing your uniform under this, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who could that be? 
David Robinson ranked among the 90s best, despite the confusion about his rank. Is he the general or the admiral? The admiral, or like Avery Johnson would say, the admiral. Anderson and a four on one to the admiral. You know, whatever, I'm not from the military, but I, I know his status, he was great. David Robinson was a beast. He run the floor like a gazelle. It's his first to run. Robinson ahead of the field has it. Oh, a 360 spin. David Robinson. Oh, my gosh. The Admiral, free in the lane. What a perfect player. What a perfect man. David Robinson, the Navy. Man, what can you say? Always kept the guns. He was like the first cock diesel center. Hey, it's your neighborhood. You don't know it's his neighborhood. He won the scoring title. He won MVP. He scored 70-some points. It's almost not heard of. Give it to David. Double team by Wood. Takes the jumper. Yes! 71 for David Robinson. To look back on it now and tell my kids, hey, I scored 70 points in a game, and they're like, you? You scored 70 points in a game? That's ridiculous. In it goes, and this time Robinson beats the double team. I've been fortunate enough to be able to do a couple neat things in my career, um, getting that quadruple double. Down the lane goes Robinson, already with a quadruple double. That was a lot of fun. NB90's Volume 3 will be right back. This is NB90, Volume 3. In his rookie season, Chris Webber broke out his own Bay Area funk. Webber! Oh, brother! When we talked about C. Webb, and you saw him at 12. He said, he's a pro. This is where we were going in the NBA. We were heading in this direction. Webber! Webber! He was the best big guy I ever played with. One of the most gifted and talented forwards of all time. Pass right down to Webber. He turns. Look up behind the back. And the step and the foul. What a play by Webber. Spectacular. I remember Charles Barkley saying that he was pissed off that they made a commercial out of that. Barkley, he's trying to block it. Oh, wait, he's too high. He's too high. Uh, he did get dunked on nice right there. Chris Webber was hip hop. I called Chris the shoulder man. Everything was here. Like when someone danced, they danced like this. When he ball, it's like this. Let you fly. Oh, what a rebound by Weber over my <laughs> Everything is here. That's my man. He could almost be a new addition the way he'd be moving. And I like Chris. Smooth. He's got the biggest hands and like he would catch everything. Like you throw him the ball, you're like boom, boom. He, he never dropped anything in the post. It was like, yeah, come double me, come double. We'll put this ball out here like this. I'm gonna pick you apart behind my head, around my back, across my face. It looked like he was always bragging in his game. He was he was the chip on the shoulder guy. Also out west, life on the road could get a little rocky for Denver's Mount Matumbo. The mirror that I'm washing my face, I can't even see my face. I hit my head in this stuff here. So what I gotta do, bend my head, bend my knees to take a shower. So by the time I finish taking a shower, I might have a cramp, who knows? Man, does night fly in my house, Smitty. Fade away. Comes out of nowhere. You will never dunk on Mount Matumbo. Matumbo, the mountain. Not in my house. But Dikembe had it all locked down when it appeared the top seeded Sonics were about to sweep his nuggets out of the opening round of the 94 playoffs. The young Mount Matumbo was waiting for them. And Matumbo comes over to swat it away. Kendall Gill, Matumbo again. So he blocked my shot, he waved that finger. We were really going at it at that time. Hayden, blocked by Matumbo. Gotta love the Kembe Matumbo. Denver upset Seattle, one verse eight. That's it. Matumbo embraces the ball. One of the great upsets in NBA playoff history. The most miserable day of my life, you know, when they beat us. I hate that picture of him laying on the ground holding the ball up. I mean. <laughs> when we won, I just grabbed the ball and I fall. I start crying because I just cannot believe we won this game. With the Sonics out, the Rockets' three-headed backcourt was ready for liftoff. Mad man, Matt. Vernon Maxwell was, was bout it, bout it. Maxwell for three! You really didn't know what to expect with Mad Max. Kenny the Jet! The Jet. I don't know where that part came in the Jet because he wasn't that fast. Smith gets it off. And it hits! New York dude, killing us. 
killing us, man. Kenny all alone, a three-pointer. Yeah! Kenny can score that basketball and run the show. And, and he still lets you know about it today, how good he was. Major League. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you know, sir? Boy, man. <laughs> you know, he was, I don't know how old he was, 21, but he played like he was 31. Sam all the way to the basket, up, up, yes! up, two the foul. Sam Cassell, the predator. The guy has so many different moves. Wheeling and dealing and nothing, like smiling. Teeth for days. Sam Cassell had teeth for days. Yeah, here I come. Sam Cassell, Sam I am. He would talk to everybody while still kicking everybody's butt. Man, that voice gets on my nerves sometimes. We have a name for him called a raggedy man. He just go out there and he just plays. Cassell was just a nightmare. Cassell came in and was just, I uh, wanted a ring in his first year apparently, more than anybody else. The championship chase was interrupted by the most infamous chase of the decade. You knew something was up because it was such a big game and there was this buzz in the crowd and it was like the people weren't as focused on our game. And this is the NBA Finals in Madison Square Garden. You know, it's no bigger event. We are, of course, mindful of the O.J. Simpson situation and we will apprise you of any new developments. Man, this is like the craziest thing I've ever heard, but there's the game is getting ready to start too. You can't be cutting away so we can talk O.J. Simpson. We don't care about that white Bronco. Put the game back on. My goodness. The Knicks are going to be one win away from their first NBA championship in 21 years. But after the Rockets tied the series at three apiece, the Knicks had a game seven to forget. Starks again for three. It's now one for 11. We had had so many games over the years where Johnny had struggled to make shots or Patrick had struggled, but they made them when we needed them to. The Knicks don't get to where they were without Starks. Starks was having a good finals up until that moment. Starks again for three. Starks is now two for 17. I was the only one in the old Summit in Houston with my John Starks jersey like this, playing myself. You know, listen, we all wish it had turned out better, at least all the Knicks fans and Knicks players did. We were close. We were close to winning. That was the year I said to myself, Patrick is gonna do it. And then it all happened. Elijah Wan, beautiful move. He'd have you doing, like he'd have you spinning around. Certain games he was just giving Pat the business. It's almost like Patrick was out there guarding Iverson or something. Long lob down court, open Elijah Wan. Tomahawk jams it home. And the Houston Rockets, led by Akeem Elijah Wan, are the world champions of 1994. That's the inside stuff. Hey, y'all like the show? Let us know. Hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag NB90s. Come on, y'all. You are watching NB90s Volume 3. We're the rookies of the year, and we love this game. Jason Kidd and Grand Hill. The league was in their hands to take it to the next level. Co-rookies of the year, I would have had a hard time picking rookie of the year that year as well. Grant, you sure were good tonight. Grant Hill was a monster in a Detroit jersey. Believe it. Rock over dribble between the legs, gutting on the run, he got it! We had the chance to rearrange the position small forward. Buckle up! Oh, baby, what a play by Grant Hill! I don't think anybody's played point guard like Jay Kidd since Jay Kidd. You knew that, man, this guy, he, he's got a chance to be special. He has one of the craziest basketball IQs on the fly. If you play with Jason Kidd, you better be alert. You never know where that ball is coming from. The great thing about myself and Jason, we knew that you know we were good players, and it kind of fueled you. It was a respect thing. All right, what's next on the menu? You can't forget about the big dog. They said you had to feed the big dog, because if there was one thing Glenn Robinson could do, he could shoot. Woo! His shot was lethal. You knew that if you didn't come to play, I mean, this guy could go crazy on you. He was like one of these dudes who didn't sweat much. It just looked like it just came too easy. And you're like, yo, man, you're out here with Barkley and Jordan. Like, with, yo, you better start sweating, man. I always loved going to Milwaukee. Can't believe I said that, but I always did because I got a chance to go against the big dog. Yeah, but knocking one down from long range wasn't quite the same feat when the NBA moved in the three-point line. 
22 footer. Yes, and it's a three point gun. I didn't like when they shortened the three point line because it seemed like everybody could make that shot. Out to Rodman for three. Hey, hey, Dennis! When you move it in, it becomes a layup for most of the people in the league. I think I took the most threes out of my career that year they moved it up. I'm like, what are you doing that for? Dennis Scott from the old three-point line, all bottom. This is already feeling good to me out here. You're going to move it up some? They said, JYD, we want you to shoot some threes. There's no way Jerome Williams is going to take the shot from out there. I still didn't shoot any, so they moved it back. In the spring of 95, rumors were flying that Ed Jordan was about to soar once more. Michael Jordan has returned, and he's wearing number 45. I, I never was able to wrap my head around the 45. It just didn't look right. It didn't fit right. It was 45. That's somebody else. Hey, welcome back. Hello, Michael. What's up, big dog? again. Came back. Hit me. Hit a game winner against me. He in and out and knocked it down. Jordan for the win. Yeah! Gave me the... He is now back. It was like bittersweet because you were glad he was back for the NBA. They're on their feet, they love it. Even if you wanted to kick the Bulls, but you wanted to see Jordan do his thing. Yeah, and just five games into his revival, Michael took the great white way by storm. Starks plays Jordan better than anyone. He wanted Starks to lock him down, but just don't say anything. Don't agitate him. Michael Jordan, who is now deep in conversation with John Starks. You got a rusty Michael Jordan. If I'm ever going to talk trash, this is the time, right? And that's all he really needed was just some trash talk. And then it's like, OK, I'm back. He was doing everything, dunking, running, shooting. The whole package was there. He loves to play at Madison Square Garden. Put him on stage, and you're going to get these kind of performances. He came back and lit us up. 55 points for Michael Jordan tonight. I love John Starks. He was such a great Nick, and he loved taking on all challenges. But just do it qu quieter next time. Like, Yeah, I feel you, Mike. Rap, uh, MB90s. We'll be right back after the break. Shh. In 1995, Sixth Man of the Year, Anthony Mason was a building block and a fan favorite at the Garden. Anthony Mason, wow. Anthony Mason is a true 90s basketball character. He's like 6'6", a muscle-bound point forward. He, play, he would handle the ball. He was a freak. I mean, 6'6", 275, point guard. Should have been playing uh, middle linebacker for the Giants or the Jets. And he had this low handle. He like he was like he was wanted to be a guard, but he also was like I also want to do pull-ups. Yes, he was the first player that uh, in the history of the NBA that used his head as a billboard. He had like these crazy like designs and quotes and I don't know what like barcodes and like messages to like you know other planets you know in his hair. Anthony Mason was a scary looking dude. He was a nice guy but man I'm telling you when he got <laughs> he stared at you it's like man he looked like he could like eat your head off. One other no Charles Smith <laughs> whenever he got the ball in the post help help I need some help when the conference semis rolled around, the Knicks and Pacers added another chapter to their heated 90s rivalry. We used to battle with the Pacers a lot. Uh, Reggie, Spike Lee. It, it was amazing that the energy. So it was always drama. They just matched up so well. Reggie was the guy that pushed all the buttons that would say little things that would upset you and that was the master at it. He used to get under John Stark's skin so much that John wanted to beat him up. And John Starks has been thrown out. Slowly, every year, the Pacers were getting closer and closer. And eventually, Miller for three. And he got it. Reggie Miller hits a three. It's like, oh, all right, all right, all right. And it happened so damn fast, man. I still don't remember all of it, to be honest with you. Inbound the ball, he pushes Greg Anthony, he falls, steals the ball, it's like, oh! And it's 105-102. And a steal, Miller retreats to the three-point line and hits again! Uh, so wait, we were up, how many, then you look to your friend, we were up, the, the game's tied? But he clearly pushed me. 
you know, and he also embarrassed us. I got to be honest, you know. Reggie Miller scoring eight points in the final seconds. 37 points in like 15 seconds, right? Eight points in 18 seconds. We were shocked. We had that game in the bag. And what hurts the most is we ended up coming back in the series, forcing the seventh game. But that's when Ewing turned into George Gervin. Womp, 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 womp. Way out near the midcourt line, driving on Workman. He forces up the three. He had it. He had it. But the Pacers' chances went up in smoke when they ran into a couple of magicians in Orlando. Penny and Shaq, man. Penny was a beast. Oh, oh what a pass. Oh, that's the pass of the year. Oh, Ava. Those two back then just took the league by storm. Shaq, he was just dunk-a-thon. Here is Shaq, baby! Shaq and Penny were so fun. They were so interesting. They were so exciting. They were the new breed. They were the next Kareem and Magic. The Orlando Magic universally regarded as the NBA's team of the future. They were on TV as much as anybody else. They had as many endorsements as anybody else, as big a stars as movie stars. You know, they had Penny and Lil' Penny. I thought he had tremendous potential to be, you know, one of the greatest players of all time pre Injuries. Before Penny got hurt, I think he was as good as Kobe was around Kobe's sixth and seventh year. You think he has eyes in the back of his head? They had a kid named Dennis Scott. And uh, Dennis Scott, one of those guys that you, you just could not leave him open. Hey, Dennis Scott was one of the best three point shooters to ever play in the NBA. And he had a swagger. And the swagger went together with he and Shaq. They're almost inseparable. Ping, ping, ping. Baseline fade away like Bernard King. <laughs> yeah, but the defending champion, Houston Rockets, they had swagger too. And they were poised for another run. Corner for three, hit it! Mario Ellie with a three! And they were making moves. See, Elijah Juan has David Robinson just bamboozled. David Robinson, the reigning MVP on top of his game, and a king torch David. I don't know if David Robinson had on tennis shoes that play, but I think he had on skates. The way he was sliding from side to side, the pump fake, the left, the right. The Dream was the best player on the planet. Of course, I got a taste of that in 95 when they swept us in the finals. That was really the glory years for Houston in the middle of that decade, winning back-to-back -back titles. Clyde had just come from Portland, back home to Houston, and back home to play with Akeem, where they had played in college together. Clyde the Glide finally gets the ring. Classic Clyde the Glide, but to have the, the honor to play with that guy and win a championship with that guy is probably one of the greatest thrills because he's gonna always go down as one of the best players to play this game. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. Nah, never coach. And I'm Fab Five Freddy, and that's it for volume three. Oh, snap. NBA TV presents MB 90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevates and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he would do, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes. We know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in like 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB 90. In 1995, the league expanded to Toronto and Vancouver. In Canada, the NBA was off the charts because the kids loved the uniforms. The mascots were off the chain. <laughs> Vancouver may be one of the most beautiful cities for sightseers, but watching the play of the brand new Grizzlies was often unbearable. 
I love Vancouver. I love the people. And we just, we were just really bad. It's just been an awful, awful night. That's terrible. The losing may have frustrated the players, but the fans were too polite to complain. Or maybe just too tired. I think they lost all their energy yelling for the hockey teams. And you kind of could feel it as you're playing in Vancouver. You just, they're, they're like, they're witnessing an experiment or something. Yeah, the experiment only lasted six years as the Grizzlies eventually migrated south. You know that old saying when you think about the good old days? That's exactly how I remember my life. So I don't remember a lot about the Vancouver Grizzlies because those weren't the good old days. <laughs> But up in Toronto, there was a different feeling in the crisp Canadian air. And it all started with the Raptors' first ever draft choice who had an inside track to inside stuff. He's the number one pick of Toronto. Great shooter. Great player, exciting player. Stoudemire pulls up with the jump shot and buries it. And thus the beginning of my main man Stoudemire. It's almost to the point where his name was main man Stoudemire rather than, uh, what was his name? Oh, I man, do that again. <laughs> I didn't even know his name because it's main man Stoudemire. I knew there was something I liked about that Damon Stoudemire. He's my favorite player in the NBA and will be on the show every single week. My man, Damon Stoudemire, makes a tasty dish. His name was Damon Stoudemire, but it, to me it was main man Stoudemire because that's all I ever called him. Damon! Yeah, main man. That's what it was. But determining who was a main man was hardly an exact science. Well, we always wanted to watch. We wanted to see who his main man was this week. Who is your main man? Well, see, there's a difference. See, there's a main man and there's a main man. That was the fun part because everybody was a mod's main man. That's because you're my main man. man no, no, see? A main, main man. Now, this tells you something about my man Chat. Not to be confused with my man Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. Him and my main man, Terrell Brandon. Oh, man. I had some main men, boy. Phil and I uh, have complete confidence that this is uh, going to work out extremely well with Dennis Rodman. By the middle of the decade, the Chicago Bulls had gone through a two-year title drought, but things started to change when they hooked the worm. One of the biggest coups in basketball during that time was Dennis Rodman being brought to Chicago. Good old number 91. I loved Dennis as a teammate. Cisco from Drew Hill. He obviously loves attention, but the man knew how to play. There's Dennis again. He is something to watch. He doesn't even have to score a basket to turn a game around. He's not the type of guy that you want to play against, but he's often the type of guy that you want to play with. That's what Dennis does. He does it better than anybody in the league. There's the worm doing his usual. Will battle you to the nail and get you upset while he's doing it. Say things to you, blow in your ear, look at you. Maybe a little bit childish and funny at times. guys frustrated, you know, get them off the game. Whatever he wanted to do, uh, he could do, as long as he kept getting those 18 rebounds a night. Don't forget to hit us up on Twitter, hashtag MB90s. Get with the program. Welcome back to MB90s. At the 96 Slam Dunk Contest, Brent Barry brought game and a cool name. Dr. J, Air Jordan, what Barry? What's your nickname now? They call me Bones on the team, so I just stick with that. <laughs> Bones. Bones Barry. First of all, Barry had a great hair day on that particular night. Like, it was made for the dunk contest. Like, when he ran, it was just kind of moving with him. Now, that had a little flavor to it. He was so confident, didn't even take off his warm-up jacket. He told me he forgot to take off his jacket. Yo, you're doing it in front of legends. Take your jacket off, man. He's going to bring out the free throw line. For the first round, he's bringing it out. But you know what? You have to love it because it's still a tremendous leap. I like this. That was cool. I give him respect because he said, you know what? I'm going to do my best, most difficult dunk early. I'm just going to do it right away so you guys see what I'm doing. You can see the players in the background, which is always one of the most fun parts of the dunk contest, seeing their reaction. 
don't know how he got that because his brother couldn't jump and Rick Barry shot underhand free throws. So we're, how is this happening? Like what backyard are you hanging out in? In Chicago, Bulls fans were treated to some tasty dishes from Tony Kukoc. He was a fantastic player. Called him the waiter because he served everybody. He was one of those guys, when you look at him, he looked very unassuming. And then when you get on the court, he had all these skills. He could shoot the three, he could put it on the court, he could pass. He was what we call the Euro magic. No look passes, dribble, shoot, drive. Just kill it. One second, that's got a cheer! Tony with a victory! The Croatian sensation. One of the most talented, not just international players, one of the most talented guys that we've seen at that size. People are always going to talk about Scotty. Of course, they're going to talk about MJ, but Tony Kukoc made a lot of things happen for that team. Oh, shot. Give the ball right now to Tony. Tony would team with three future Hall of Famers to rewrite the record book. The Bulls finished the regular season, 72 wins. They were motivated every single game. Every single game. What the and the league was not weak either, so it wasn't like they were beating weak teams. I remember one time we were actually up. I'm like, man, we might be one of those teams that's going to beat the Bulls today. Huh? Huh? <laughs> man, was I wrong. You know, it's, it's the funniest thing. You never be in awe while you playing them, but when you sit back and you watch, you're like, wow, did they just do that? The Bulls have been superb. Just by being part of, of that team, I was able to be a part of NBA history. I was pretty lucky. Question is now, who can beat the Chicago Bulls team? Do your thing. Do, do your thing. Well, out west, the Seattle Sonics were making noise, led by Gary Payton. They call him the glove so quick. The glove. The glove. He would talk so much smack that you could never take it personally. Just started being funny. Uh-uh, don't talk to him like that, Peter Knuckles. I never could understand it, but he had some good lines, you know. If your head lumpy, I tell you your head lumpy. I do eat that one out of here, boy. He liked intimidating me. He liked hey, thing, boy. defeating your mental toughness. No point guard played defense like Gary Payton that I could think of. Oh, that's my ball. He would tell you, I'm going to beat you down, and I'm going to score 20 points on you and have 10 assists. There's nothing that you're going to be able to do about it. And he would go out and get 20 and 10. Too far ahead, he saved the throw. Oh, you've got to love that action. Good. Peyton running his mouth, throwing lobs. I mean, sometimes he wouldn't even look, just put it up there, and he's going to catch it. The rain man coming. Sean Kemp, the Rain Man. Wow. Sean Kemp, Rain Boy. He was just a teen, yet he was in the NBA. He's just a child. He's a man. This was a grown man when we were teenagers. He's a man child. He had a full goatee. He was like 17, 18 years old. And he came, and he grew, and he fed on the rain. Oh, sweet rain. I like this place. Between the legs. Oh, into the yeah, the freak of nature. Uh, like I said, I can throw alley oops to him anywhere. If you see our highlights, I would throw it from anywhere. I would throw it with my left hand, I would throw it with my feet, I would throw it with my head. He would go get it. I'll just throw it and then I'll start running backwards because I knew he was going to put on a show. Man, I'm telling you. He crushed that one. Sean Kemp was sick. Yo, the Sean Kemp Alton Lister dunk. What are you? Whoa, just get out of the way. Fly now Kemp going to the hoop. Wow. Now that is attacking the basket. And then hit him with the, hey. Kemp literally pointed at my, <laughs> you should have moved out of the way. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. You'd be like, hey, did I actually jump with this guy? Did I, did, did, did I do that? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Sean Kemp and Gary Payton, they made it hot up there. After winning the West, things were really heating up in Seattle. And the Bulls were getting ready for the Sonic Air Show. Check it out. 
From the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, welcome to the 1996 NBA Finals. Okay, go to the next guy. Get out. Get, get, get. That was a hell of a team. And George Carl, hell of a coach. If Michael gets to the post, I'm going to double him. Every time he touches it, you're going after him. And time comes Jordan. Deflected beautifully by Askew. Peyton's loose. Peyton leading the way. And that little look like, Michael, you're the king, but I'm coming after you tonight. There were so many highlight film scenarios in that series. Off the dribble, Michael crosses over. Michael falls, fires, oh! <laughs> Win or lose, we're taking something in that locker room and believing each other in this level. You gotta believe that, guys. You fought too hard. Every one of you, grab each other and trust each other. It was just they had a great team, but the wrong time. We all had that play against the Bulls, couldn't get over the hump. The Chicago Bulls have regained the NBA throne. Probably in a better series if we could have went to game seven, but they were a great team and they deserved one. I actually feel like we just took a two-year hiatus and now we're back again. How do you feel to hold it again, Mike? I think it's heavier than all over. Yeah, the Bulls are back on top and NB90s is back after this break. Hi, I'm Michael Rappaport, and one thing I remember about the 90s, crazy draft day suits. Oh my God, Samaki Walker. Did you lose a bet? The super fly hat on, too big. Is that cowboy hat? Just tripping, all white everything. Why go like white suit, cowboy hat? Like it just didn't fit, like go full cowboy. Kobe being Bryant came in, he was like, yo, I I'm gonna hook it up. I'm like a businessman, but I'm also like, you know, I'm in the mob, so I'm gonna have like, you know, the weird collar. I don't even know what that's called. Like when the, like the collars like come together. You're 15, man. Bonzi Wells. Bonzi wore a suit wedding dress to the draft. Like we need like someone to hold the train. <laughs> Jalen Rose, listen. I, don't, I like the color red, um, and I also like candy canes. You're getting drafted, you might as well stand out and look like something that you put on the Christmas tree. I don't know who told you that red was dope, and then a red pinstripe was dope. Not, not, nothing was dope about it. Jalen, don't hit me, we're boys. Come on, the 90s were bad for clothes, we know this. Yeah, some of them draft suits were tough to look at, but the 96 class was dressed for success. Boy, this is a good looking group, David Stern. That was the draft of all time. Franchise player after franchise player. Marcus Camby, Sharif Abdurrahim, Stephon Marbury, Ray Allen. I mean, you got Kobe Bryant, 14. Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School. Steve Nash. Two-time MVP. He wasn't even a lottery pick. 96. If you don't know, do your research. Yeah, but there was no question who was number one. The answer. Allen Iverson was <sighs> ridiculous. Coleman almost ran him over trying to do something. A I. AI is just so fly because it's A1, it's the sauce. It just feels good when it's poured over the right thing, and money was just the right thing. Iverson has Marbury, crosses over, strong to the... He, to me, was a great artist because you got a sense of who he was as a person because of how hard he played. Left 20 gallons of sweat on the court every game. That's AI. Iverson made you proud to be part of the NBA. That guy was so good. So tough. Iverson easily by price for two. Allen Iverson talking to Charles Barkley. Couldn't nobody stop him. He could score anytime he wanted to, 40s, 50s, whatever he wanted to do. Allen Iverson four straight with 40 or more. Allen Iverson with 50 for the night. He was the anchor to a lot of kids' dreams and hopes. He just met, meant so much to so many people, and he just was so unique. Trying to guard this guy is like trying to hold 
water in the palm of your hand. Let's see what Anthony does. Forget about it. Iverson for two. And when you talk pop culture, he was right at the top. He was one of the most popular people, popular players in the NBA all over the world. I don't know if he was the first dude with cornrows. Allen would keep his tight, because, you know, you got to have your cornrows hooked up. Iverson. Crosses over against Brown. Gets two. That's what I love about him. He brought swagger. The guy told me, when I get to the league and I play against Mike, I'm going to hit him with the crossover. And I was like, son, you're not crossing up Michael Jordan. Have you lost your mind? Ooh. Ooh. That was like, word. He didn't shake Michael Jordan once. He shook him twice. Yeah, Mike in the blender. And made the shot, buff, whole lap. Jordan got shook, and then he went out and dropped 60 on someone's face. That's right, MJ would have the last laugh. We'll show you how on the other side. We're back with more MB90s. As the NBA celebrated its 50th anniversary season, the league revealed its 50 greatest players of all time, upping the wattage at All-Star Weekend in 1997. I tried to get as many as him. I couldn't get there. And then I was fighting this man. It was a noble effort, effort, though. Yeah, noble effort. Noble effort. <laughs> it was cool to see all those guys from the different eras. George Kerbin, Kerbin, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Wilt Chamberlain. It was kind of cool to sort of sit there and watch history come alive. Ladies and gentlemen, let us salute together the greatest NBA players of all time. Meanwhile, Robert Parrish gave new meaning to NBA at 50. All right, he was only 43 when he joined the Bulls. I'm definitely not going to get any better from an athletic standpoint, so it just boils down to do I still want to play? It was sort of an insurance policy just in case, but he brought, uh, you know, he brought a lot of, um, um, <laughs> ah, the chief. Probably played a little bit too long. Just a mystery. One of those guys, you're like, yo, how's he doing it? Yeah. This old man, he play one. Play he play knick knack on my thumb. I remember watching him when I was in high school, in junior high school. And, uh... <laughs> in terms of longevity in the NBA, hail to the chief. Here I come, world. Here I come. From a timeless wonder to a boy wonder, Kevin Garnett made his grand entrance on the All-Star stage. It's the youngest man since Magic Johnson to make an All-Star team, Kevin Garnett. Whoever knows Carrie Payton, <laughs> whether you guys were there <laughs> or not, he was going to have that moment when he was going to sing. He's going on 20 and 21. He's 20 and he's going on 21. He's in the NBA. We're going to call him <laughs> Sir Plastic Man. Slink, slink. Looking inside Robinson. Oh, darn net. Where did he come from? He's the kind of guy who curses himself out. Don't be so mean, KG. I mean, I'm like he's going to beat himself up just to motivate himself to defeat you. The 97 playoffs were packed with crazy buzzer beaters. Chapman for the tie. Oh! But none was bigger than a jazz classic that left the Rockets feeling kind of blue. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three, hit it! John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals! John Stockton would never choke under pressure, always make shots, always make plays. Carl Malone, I felt like he fed off of some of that. See, if you really think one, two, punch, point guard, point guard, big man, Stockton and Malone, what jumps to mind right away. Stockton to Malone! How many times is that said? Stockton to Malone. One of the classic nicknames. The ball, ball delivers! Mailman, Carl Malone, he's a bad man. He's a bad man. Malone took home the hardware as league MVP, but Michael Jordan took the shot that sealed game one of the finals. Michael hangs, fires, scores! I've had so many, I can't even remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> then in 1999, 
Then in game five, MJ delivered a <coughs> sick performance. Michael Jordan, he is suffering from flu-like symptoms. There is no flu in basketball. And Michael is dead he on his feet. Exhausted. See, he looks like he's getting ready to fall over on Pippen. Jordan is absolutely exhausted and worn out. But then the, get out of the huddle, like, eh. buzzer goes off. He's like, boop. He's like a robot. He turned back on. He's hitting you at the crossover. Fade away. Carl Malone, none of them can stop him. Yes. Classic performance by the flu ridden Michael Jordan. One shot for their fifth title, and everyone knew the Bulls were going to Steve Kerr? He said to Jordan, you pass me that ball, I'm going to be ready. He comes off, I'll be ready. I mean, I was wide open for jump shots because of those two guys. Michael in traffic to Kerr, 15 footers. Yeah. Show enough, buff, another title. Mike always had a good shooter with him. I was able to fill a role uh, because of their talent and fit in on one of the best teams in, in league history. That's right, we're history too. That's it for volume four. This is Fab Five Freddy saying, see you on the rebound on MB90s. Oh, snap. NBA TV presents MB90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevates and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes, we know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in like 15 seconds. So chill on out, we're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB90. In June of 1997, the obvious first pick in the NBA draft wasn't coming from an obvious place. He's a swimmer from the Virgin Islands. Are you kidding me? And upon receiving the call, the college standout broke into a little stand-up. So, Pop, all I've heard right, from, from since I've gotten here was that you're going to trade me. That's all I've heard for the last 20 minutes. Timmy. And who would have ever thought you'd call this guy Timmy? Duncan, and that is his first NBA basket. Tim Duncan, so quiet, so reserved, can't get him to say boo. Look at that spin move, baseline, wow. Oh my goodness. The happiest person in the entire NBA when Tim Duncan got drafted by the Spurs was David Robinson. And Tim Duncan ain't nothing but a new David Robinson. We called him the quiet guys that win. Yeah, Duncan and Robinson. The ultimate professionals, just the dignity and the poise that those guys always displayed, to me, defined those Spurs teams. In the Duncan sweepstakes, the Celtics had the odds on their side with their lucky leprechaun, too. But this time, the little leprechaun came up short. Imagine that. Duncan would have been great in Boston. It, it was tough on the city. Definitely was. In D.C., the fans didn't have much to jump up and down about. So a franchise in need of a change started with their name. Me personally, I'm looking forward to something new. You know, the Bullets haven't won in a long time, and I'm looking forward to creating our own history. I think any name works when you win. <laughs> you could be called the losers and win the championship, and everybody feel good about you. New York City is the home of fashion. Hip hop, bagels, and point guards. Matter of fact, point guides. I hear you, Fife. And one of those point guards turned out to be a wonderful wizard. Oh my God. Rod Strickland, one of the best point guards. Rod is a pure point guard. He can shoot the ball from the outside, has good range, but also looks to penetrate and dish the ball off. I remember hearing about him before I even saw him when he, when he was still in high school. Strictly strict. Bring the coin changer. Rod's throwing nothing but dimes. 
the dribble, get all the way in the painted area. Pause, sometimes in the air or on the ground. Whap, hit the open person. I think he's the best in the league at getting to the basket. Every team he went to, he made that team better. Still to come on MD 90s. Half man, half amazing. Down court, Vince Carter, he flies it. Are you kidding me? He's probably one of the greatest in-game dunkers of all time. You go to a regular game, he had some dunks that probably could have won the dunk contest. He's got McGrady again this time. The long to Vince Carter. Throw it down, big man, one time. Nasty. Boy, that's my boy. Everything I taught him. How about this guy, Vince Carter? Vince Carter was sick. Hey, y'all like the show? Let us know. Hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag NB90s. Come on, y'all. You are watching NB90s Volume 5 with me, Fab Five Freddy. What up, y'all? This is Mike Bev. And the one thing I remember about the 90s was the incredible nicknames. Check them out. Mailman delivered. Back to Carl base left. 12 footer. Good. The mailman delivered. And he was a big mailman, too. He had a double bag. Collis Williamson. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What was his nickname again? The Big What? Here's Look Big out. Nasty. Look out below. The Big Nasty. That's what it was. He was fitting Big Nasty. He was definitely nasty. <laughs> Augman. Stacy Augman, Plastic Man. Oh, that's why they call him the Plastic Man. He almost was like a GQ NBA model ball player, man. I like this, Stacey. Robert Tractor Trailer, may he rest in peace. Milwaukee runs out. Oh, baby, Tractor, do it, big fella. <laughs> big up chop, light on the toes. Tractor Trailer, I loved it. Great nickname. Antoine Walker, I don't remember his nickname. Employee number eight, that's, that's pretty hot. I just call Antoine the shake, man. He was like the Harlem up top shaker. Just as the decade had begun, it would close with Portland blazing a trail as a Western Conference power. And they couldn't have done it without their international man of mystery. A legend that we had heard so much about. He was straight up Drago. He was straight up on that, like, I must break you style. But then he'd make these crazy passes. You know, he would throw around the back passes and between the leg passes. Wow! Arvidas orchestrated the whole deal. We saw him at the end of I just wish he would have had that opportunity uh, earlier in, in his career. In the City of Roses, the Blazers were in full bloom. While in the City of Big Shoulders, the Bulls had come to lean on their dynamic duo. Batman and Robin. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Q-Tip fight dog. It made it hard for any team. I don't care what kind of role you were on. You had to slow your roll down. It was just unreal for them to have everything, athleticism, skills, and also they played together. Jordan off the screen by Pippen, right back to Scotty. Oh, oh, oh. Any of these long players that are out now who play defense and can push the ball up the court and everything like that, they all come from that Scotty Pippen mold. Scotty had that body sculpted by Michelangelo. There's nobody in our game right now that takes the game that's serious defensively and who were born with just some spider arms. Fires for Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen in the face of Patrick Ewing. His contributions, I think, sometimes get lost in the Bulls and their success. It was a familiar tune at the 98 Finals when the Bulls and Jazz got together for an encore. And game six came to a thunderous crescendo. It's Stockton, a three-pointer. The Jazz got the game. They're up one, 20 seconds left. Great free throw shooting team. I was actually excited to see the Bulls have to play a game seven. And then Jordan steals the ball. Uh-oh. And then Jordan comes down, takes his time. The Bulls can win it right here. Everybody in the building knew what was going to happen. Here's a story that Michael told me about. He goes, man, you know, when I quit playing, I was in a gym working out in Chicago. Brian Russell walks through. He goes, oh, man, I hate you quit, man, because I was going to bust your Hey, fire, yes! You got to be careful what you say to who. Of course that shot goes in. That's what he does. Look at all the faces 
in this photo. This is a sad, sad sight right here. It was just the wrong time. Do I keep saying that as we talk about the 90s? Did you say their timing was wrong? It was the Bulls decade. Their sixth NBA championship. Six of them. Now, y'all say whatever you want. They can't win till we quit. As the decade was coming to a close, the Bulls run was coming to an end. But it sure was a memorable last dance. How do you break up a team that's winning? They left with the crown and that was it. Then he went and had some parties. Mike leaves, Scotty, he gone. How does that happen? The culmination of just an incredible experience for all of us who played with the Bulls during those years. Coming up next. White chocolate, dope knit thing. White chocolate brought Yo, he was like, yo, what's up? Bends into the lane, double, feeds it out to Jason Williams. Jason back to Williamson, wide open. A great pass from Jason Williams. You're watching MB 90s, volume five. You are watching MB 90s, volume five. It's time for rewind. <laughs> We had this segment called Rewind, which was the hottest segment going. Oh, yeah, Rewind! I remember Rewind. That was like my favorite part. And check out this edition in this edition. In this edition of Rewind. Rewind had a little narration to it. You know, the mob would be like, oh, Monday, this is what we had. What day of the week is it today? Monday! On this Monday. Today, boys and girls, Today is Monday. Um, it's Ahmad Rashad having a bunch of fun. Tuesday. Wednesday. Friday! And Rewind, yeah, you just saw all the plays and then the bloopers and stuff like that. We watched Rewind and it was like, it was like gold. It was before all the social media. During that time, the only place you can get that was inside stuff. And thanks for watching Repetition. That's Rewind. <laughs> Fortunately, styles like the Jerry Curl fade away. But A.C. Green, who wore it well, managed to endure like none other in NBA history. 1,192 games. Like, who plays that many games grabbing rebounds, banging? You're sweating, but I don't know if you're sweating jerry curl juice on me. I don't know what's going on here. Eventually cut the jerry curl. Had a nice little fade, and I don't think that record will ever be broken. AC Green is so stable, so dependable. AC Green was the true Iron Man. He was the man of steel. But Superman's not the only one who can fly. The NBA was taken to new heights by Air Canada. They're going to cut. 10 seconds. Watch the penetration. He's going to the basket. Score! Vince Carter. Throw it down, big man, one time. He brought the ruckus. He went to North Carolina. Like, a lot of those players are under wraps. It's like, as soon as he got into the NBA, it was like, I'm free. Oh, oh my goodness. Then sanity. I mean, this guy's crazy. Carter. Elevates and throws it down. I love Matumbo. If ever there was a time where he should have did that to himself, that would have been it. He should have waved the finger to himself because that was just, that's like a retirement, Doug. That's the stuff that we, we say, Matumbo's jogging down court, you're like, man, am I playing too long? Right. He's gonna run the play for us. Carter! <laughs> he had wings. The dunks of the week, he was in every single one of them. He had everything a high flyer could ask for. Literally, like, he had strings. Boom! Jump the opposite direction, turn around. What in the world? What is this? This isn't what you do, you could get hurt. I would have loved to have played against Vince Carter, and he would have dunked on me big time. Can you believe this guy? In Sacramento, there was another rookie captivating crowds with a different flavor. Williams to the hall, this guy's amazing. White chocolate, perfect name. White chocolate, let every white person know we know where it came from and let every black person know he's one of us. That was all good, perfect. When I think about one of the more exciting players in the league was Jason Williams. He could have been a Harlem Globetrotter. I'm not kidding you. 
It was showtime all over again. Oh, Williams, can you believe him? Nasty with that ball handle. He probably drove most coaches crazy, but he couldn't help himself. It's just the way he played, and it actually worked for him. Uh, Jay, <laughs> Jason, he's like uh, the newborn kid on the family. Yeah, and that youngster, he helped bring the King's crowd back to life. Oh, what a move by Jason Williams! Behind the back! Oh, they love it here! You're one of the best fan base teams in the entire NBA. The Lakers would play uh, in, up there, and like Phil Jackson would have earplugs in his ears. Like, dudes would have cowbells. Those are good fans up there. They had a great team there, a great group of guys there, and they played exciting basketball. Yeah, Jason Weber and Vladi. They had Peja, they had Doug Christie, they had the, I, the Nose Brothers. Doug Christie, he had got a beak. I could say that because I got one. And then, you know, John Barry had that pointy nose. Well, there's nothing like watching a team play that all five guys touch the ball and they've got some sort of a thing going. That's what the 90s were about. They had so many of these teams like this that they were really excited. They had a great team. I love that team. They put Sacramento on the map. You're watching MB 90s, Volume 5, with me, Fab Five Freddy. Welcome to MB 90s, Volume 5. In Vancouver, Sharif Abdul Rahim and Mike Bibby had given the Grizzlies a little northern exposure. Bibby with a no But the biggest thing to hit town was the man they called Big Country. It sounds like they might be having a little party over there. It sounds like they're getting after it. Big Country. Thank Here you. it is, twice tall as I. Yeah. <laughs> the Reeves, was that? Big Country. R-E-E-V-E-S? Uh -huh. Hello, how are you? Big Country. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yes, sir. Sometimes I just don't get it, you know? Maybe I needed to be out on the farm a little bit more. Didn't have a lot of big country in North Jersey. Nice talking to you. Stop by sometime. We'll see you later, thanks. Big country Brian. He wasn't that athletic, but he was a hard guy to stop. Big country takes it in, and a nice reversal. He had a crazy one-hand jumper. One fake, puts up the shot, it's good! Hitting people in the post. Reeves getting all the early looks. And country strong. Gives the country, goes to the rack and jams it in the face of Carl Malone. But he was born country strong. So you're having a little fish right here. That's okay, I got some right here and I'm doing just fine. But he had the whole Vancouver on his back. So I think I went fishing with him. We went and took a fish out of the water. This, you haven't seen one this big? I haven't seen one that big, but I've never seen anyone catch one that's already gutted and it's still frozen. We bounced from big country to the big city, where Patrick Ewing had been the leading man in the Big Apple for over a decade. That man was a beast. Who else could shoot the jumper? Who else could post you up and take you inside, left or right? I mean, Patrick Ewing was very athletic and a good defender. Patrick Ewing, little block, and the defensive play of the game. He was the face of that franchise for so many years. The rivalry between the Pacers and the Knicks is legendary. Oh, we could talk about the Knicks all day long. Yeah, Patrick Ewan was the truth. If it wasn't for Patrick Ewan, man, I don't know if I would have been as big of a basketball fan as I was. Yes, I do remember Pat Ewan with the big knee pads. Nobody does that anymore. I mean, the knee pads were nasty, but he was the man. Yeah, I loved everything about Pat, and I was just I always hated that he could never get one. And in 99, the Knicks were on their way. Houston ducks under, got it! And the New York Knicks have become the second number eight team to knock off a number one. And when Pat went down with an injury, the scrappy Knicks rallied to try to get one for the big fella. What a great run. That was a special team. Marcus Camby just had the greatest run of his life in those playoffs. This was the year where Larry Johnson's back was so bad that he really had to develop the three-point. He was hitting that shot, which he started doing this. And in that moment, it's your dream. Down three, I'm gonna get a four-point play. Johnson is three-point territory, but guarded tightly. Johnson cuts left, now fires a three, and it's good, and he's fouled! It counts, and he is fouled! I remember Larry Bird was on the sidelines, pissed. Larry was pissed. 
So many things about that play are special. One, the foul wasn't really a foul. I mean, it was barely like a, I think he maybe got like some of the hair on his arm. He's going nuts, he's going nuts, and he's like, yo, yo, chill, chill. And he went, mm. He took his zen moment, and took a breath, and had to hit that free throw. I remember being so nervous. I'm like, you gotta hit this free throw. You gotta hit this free throw. Larry Johnson looking for the lead. The free throw is good! A four-point play! And this incredible playoff run continues. Meanwhile, the Blazers' holiday weekend was ruined when they were barbecued at the buzzer. We call it the Memorial Day Miracle in San Antonio. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three and hits it! Sean Elliott, tippy toes. That tippy toes shot. Um... You know, I don't know what they call it in Portland, but that's what we call it, Memorial Day Miracle. Three, five, Sean Elliott, an off-balance three! Sean Elliott was huge in their championship run. Ice cold, consistent, great shooter, the guy you, you, you hated to play against but always won on your team. Good evening, everyone. From the Alamo Dome, the San Antonio Spurs, the New York Knicks in game one. The San Antonio Spurs, they were expected to be here. Robinson. Duncan, Avery Johnson, Sean Elliott, all anchored by Greg Popovich. Okay, first play, we're gonna go wedge down to Tim, see what they do. It's been happening in San Antonio for quite some time because of Popovich is that their system is a beautiful system to watch. Tim Dunn made a living. Gas step, got him, bank, take that to the bank, there's another bank shot in your face. That's Tim. And the story, Tim Duncan, 33 points, 16 rebounds. I actually thought the Knicks had a chance. A hot Latrell Sprewell. Here's Sprewell, yeah! Whoa -ho. A young, spry Marcus Canby, Larry Johnson coming up the four-point play and just, the Spurs just made it not fun. They sucked all the fun out of it. No, we're just gonna beat you slowly. Duncan and Robinson all over him, ate him up. The ultimate protectors defensively. Block, Kirk Thomas rejected by David Robinson. Spurs put a stranglehold on the 99 NBA Finals. Yeah, that's the general right there. That's the little general. You know him. Avery Johnson, that's it. They call him the little general for a reason. Tell y'all something. We, <laughs> hold on. We ain't have all that old laughing and joking before the game today. You know, everything he said meant everything in the world at that moment. You know what I'm saying? I was backing up to let you go. 5 0. 5 0. Shoot the ball. Move the ball. 5 0. Get in the post. 5 0. A title's at stake. Spurs are closing in. With the Admiral on a mission, it was the little general who came up with the biggest shot of his career. Elliott bluffs, drives, kicks. Avery Johnson for the lead. Yes. Avery Johnson drills it from the baseline. We'll forever watch that shot. The little guy sticks that dagger right toward your heart on every occasion. And I think that's the biggest thing with Avery Johnson. Never had gaudy numbers, but his team won. The San Antonio Spurs win their first ever NBA championship. For so long, this is what you dream about, you know. you. And now you stay. I can't even talk about it. I mean, it's incredible. I'm blessed, just blessed. I keep following around the best player in the game. I was fortunate to go from Chicago to San Antonio and join those guys. Man, am I lucky here? What? what the hell am I doing here? I have a feeling that has something to do with all these championships. Yeah, that 99 title would kick the Spurs to another level at the turn of the century. But that's another story for another time. Hey, yo, I'm Fab Five Freddy saying thanks for watching NB90. See you on the rebound. <laughs>